Hey there, Arconia. I'd like to express my sincere gratitude to each and every one of you for my birthday wishes and for helping us reach 500 subscribers. It made my birthday extra special and uh, in celebration that night I had a few drinks and it took me longer to recover than I thought, so I won't be doing that for a while. Thank you all so much for the follows and the birthday wishes. It means so much to me, but on to the episode. I know I say it almost every week, but this is my favorite so far. Despite the trio not reuniting, the opening scene with Uma and Bunny at the Pickle Diner was both heartwarming and kind of sad. It evoked a sense of loneliness for Uma that resonated with me. It's hard when you lose the ones you love, especially a best friend. Shortly after, we see another side of her as she gives some great advice to Charles. And Charles finds out that she took the hanky from Ben Glenroy's body. At the same time, Oliver is struggling to find a replacement for Charles as a constable in Death Rattle Dazzle, leading Cliff to show off his acrobatic skills before coming up with an idea. I feel that Cliff jumping around might be some kind of clue, although I'm unsure of its meaning, but it's been shown too many times and I just can't figure it out. Charles confronts the man who took his role in Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the one and only Matthew Broderick. His introduction, nailing the patter song, it was quintessential Matthew, and I thoroughly enjoyed every minute of him being on screen. But Oliver quickly learns that if you give Matthew an inch, he'll take a mile, and he has Oliver working at all hours on what's a pretty simple character. This leads to Oliver calling the one and only Mel Brooks. Thank you, I can't believe he popped in. I, I didn't know that, so it was a great surprise. Who tells Oliver you pretty much fucked, you know? Oliver can't take it any longer, so he ends up firing a Matthew and rehires a reluctant Charles. Meanwhile, Mabel enlists Theo's help in packing up her belongings, and I must say, they make quite the cute pairing on the show. My favorite partner of Mabel's, even though they've never actually been together. Mabel laments at her inability to uncover Ben Glenroy's killer and wonders how she might get closer to who Ben was in order to help find answers. Theo suggests that she attends the silent auction for Ben's movie memorabilia in the penthouse. During the auction, Theo tells Mabel that Ben came up with the idea of Cobra when he was a child. Mabel tries to talk to Dickie about Ben, but he instantly shuts down her attempts to gather information. However, Mabel later apologizes to Dickie, who reveals that he was adopted and shares his experiences of living in Ben's shadow. Mabel tells Dickie that the real killer deserves to be caught, but Dickie believes that they already found the killer in Ben's crazed fan Greg, and that there's no further story. Preparing for a new episode of Only Murders in the Building podcast, Mabel finds it difficult without Charles and Oliver, but Tobert suggests rebranding as the Bloody Mabel podcast. She is not fond of the idea, and Theo enters with a picture and reveals the possibility that Dickie, rather than Ben, may have been the true author behind Cobro, explaining that the bottom line on the beat and the artist's signature was possibly added later, indicating Richard, Dickie's full name. Ben later exploiting it as a film franchise for personal gain. Dickie Hidden in the Shadows gives the alternate Omit Tria a new motive that at the surface seems very sound. Charles and Oliver reconcile over a couple bottles of gut milk and Charles questions Oliver about the erasing of Ben's note on the mirror. Oliver presents Loretta's notebook and they decide to offer it as a peace offering to Mabel hoping to continue the podcast. To their surprise, Mabel has moved out and a new tenant has taken her place. Simultaneously, they discover a new episode of Omet B has been released without them. This episode packed a lot of developments. So let's decode a little more. One of the biggest is we learned that Dickie is adopted, which seems to tie into Loretta's notebook. Previously, we believed Loretta was a mother but not exactly sure who. I thought it was most likely Ben, but this revelation makes sense. Although Charles and Oliver are unaware of Dickie's adoption, I believe that once they do talk to Mabel, they will strongly consider Dickie or Loretta 
as a guilty party, ultimately leading the trio to reuniting. Mabel's no longer in the building. No. I know she's staying close by to solve the case though, so she may be staying with Theo or wherever Tauber is residing. It makes sense that Tauber would stay in the building or close by in order to put together his video on Ben. It's unclear if she's reconnected with Cinda, although it would be logical considering her financial needs. Mabel would greatly benefit from being supported by Cinda at a time like this. Personally, I think that after releasing that latest episode of the podcast, the only Murders in the Building brand should receive numerous big name deals. The podcast should attract sponsors who want to jump on board of the murder of such a famous actor. Someone like Spotify would offer them millions to make it only available on their platform. Is that your and perhaps needle? something yes. like this will happen at the end of the season, making Mabel more financially stable. Charles reveals that he has collected all of the cast members' hankies. I felt that it was unclear in their previous episodes whether or not he actually got them all. But this clears up suspicion on regular cast members. It remains possible that someone bought Kimber's hanky from eBay. However, I find this theory to be too complex and it's more likely that Ben died holding someone else's hanky. So that makes my theory regarding Bobo a no-no. The individuals who could still have handkerchiefs, the offstage production members, and those who are not directly involved in the production. This observation was mentioned by Katie in the first episode. So people like Howard, possibility of Taubert, and even Katie herself fit into this category. However, I'm particularly interested in Donna, and I plan to release a theory video about her tomorrow morning. Once again, this episode has been a standout of the season, and I anticipate that things will become more intense from this point forward. But what was your favorite part of the episode? Do you believe that the revelations will absolve Dickie from Ben's death? And most importantly, can we root for Mabel and Theo to develop a romantic relationship and say F. Tobert? Come on, let me know your thoughts below. Thank you all for watching. My name is Dallas, and I'll catch you on the rooftop.